anti-overset with the hanger. So we're gonna use a hanger to help heighten the awareness of what's going on with our wrist. This is designed for golfers who tend to really um, overset the wrist. Maybe they've practiced with a swing guide or they had the, the classic thought of trying to maximally hinge this up as much as possible. Um, but the problem is if I overset the wrist and get it as maximally hinged as I can here, then what will typically happen is one of the first things to fire will then be the wrist in transition. Um, so I get more of this arm dominant vertical kind of casting pattern um, that causes me to have to stand up away from the ground so it can start this little cascade that causes a lot of contact problems. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to hold a hanger. Um, you can either use something like the actual golf hanger or um, just a, a simple hanger you would get at Target or Walmart. And now what we're gonna do is as we bring the club back, as I hinge my wrist, I will feel the hanger slide on the wrist. So I can feel it changing position as I bring it up vertically like this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to preset a little bit there and then we're gonna concentrate on not letting the hanger come up like this. We're gonna try to keep it the same and let the wrist set more by going into extension of the trail wrist rather than hinging or radial deviation of the lead wrist. So got the hanger connected there keeping it about the same, and I'm gonna practice kind of keeping it the same there through transition. I can have a little bit of play this way, but I don't wanna have very much movement that way. Um, now, the, depending on the thickness of the hanger, you can actually hit balls uh, working on this. And because it's more of a transition thing, I probably wouldn't really do nine to threes. I'd probably start at 10 to twos and work from 10 to twos to full swings. So I'm gonna hold the hanger, underneath just like so and then I'm going to bring the club up and I'm just going to pay attention to where that set is there at a, what it feels like at about 90 degrees and now I'm going to try and feel like I end the backswing more with hip and, and body movement as opposed to really overloading the wrist. Um, typically this becomes a timing issue for a lot of golfers because they tend to really overload the wrist as the last uh, segment that gets loaded and that starts this whole cascade of it's gotten overloaded now I have to let it out pretty quickly. Okay so I'm gonna bring it up to about my 10 o'clock position and now I'm just gonna freeze the wrist in that position as I finish the rest of the swing. So I'm gonna bring it up, wrist isn't allowed to set anymore, now I'm getting the rest of the set more from a little body movement. This will help me feel ending the backswing with my body instead of ending the backswing with my wrist. I can also do this in a little shorter version where I'm gonna bring it back, just gonna preset it there, and now I'm gonna do more of a 10 to two. So I'm gonna bring it up and just release it there. Now I'm in that version, I'm not really gonna feel anything on maximally stretch at the top of the swing. When I'm doing more from the 10 to two all the way up to the full swing, I'll tend to feel the stretch or the end, the trigger for the ending of the swing more in my hips and core. So if you look at face on video and you have a really oftentimes an overswing, but if you have a lot of wrist set kind of like this, um, it's typically coming from overdoing this motion and not enough of this motion, using a hanger can help heighten your awareness and help you change that pattern. If you like this video, then click the link in the description below and head over to golfsmartacademy.com for a free trial membership. It's free, you don't even have to put in your credit card. We have over 900 videos to help you diagnose and then train to improve your golf swing. Golf Smart Academy is the ultimate resource for do-it-yourself golfers.